Hey everybody, welcome back to Welcome to Mintland, the podcast. This is Chapter 7. Welcome to Mintland. The greatest place on earth has blooming green turf. It's always a magical day when you're a mint Hey everybody, welcome back to Chapter 7. Uh, in this chapter, your favorite mini team... Uh, packs up and heads up to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And they are certainly riding a wave at this point. Um, we're starting to get into the heavy part of uh, the competition season heading into nationals. And, um, you know, heading up to Chattanooga, the team was coming off of two grand champion uh, victories, uh, not only winning their division, but the, the entire level one. So confidence is high. Uh, the, the team is feeling pretty good about themselves. And, um, you know, going into Chattanooga, they felt good about their chances to win yet again. Um, and uh, in this chapter, we, we will uh, discuss uh, how it didn't quite go as they thought it would. Uh, they had their first scare in Chattanooga. So a uh, little bit of that, and then also um, a, a weird episode that uh, I personally dealt with in Chattanooga at one of the uh, haunted hotels there in the city. So uh, without further ado, I'll, we'll get into Chapter 7 and explain all that. I hope you enjoy. Chapter 7, The Athletic Championships Peppermint was riding a huge wave after WSF. Actually, the entire gym was. The Stingray All-Stars completely dominated the entire event, from Level 1 all the way to the Senior Level 5s, along with our IOC 5 team, Electric, who won a paid bid to Worlds, along with a few other senior teams on that day. It was a great weekend for all the teams. The following day, it was back to the gym for more practice and tumble. You would think that after a long drive back home and school the following day, the kids would be beat. The truth is, after you win a six-foot-tall grand champion trophy, you want to see it back in the gym and share it with your team, friends, and family. It was back to work for Peppermint. As the team started to filter into the gym, some of the teammates were all chatting amongst themselves and showing each other their first place medals. Many of the mints wanted to take a picture with the grand champion trophy, as they were very proud of their accomplishment. As the teams began to practice, they began their normal routine, walking through and marking the counts. Their big sisters from Peach started filtering into the gym, and as they entered, Peppermint got a water break. Many of the mints found a few of the Peach teammates and gave hugs and congratulations on their big win at WSF. Peach looked very strong, and the girls were bonding over their over their accomplishments. It was fun to watch the camaraderie between the two teams grow. This was the second year in a row that Peppermint had won Grand Champion at WSF. To say that was an impressive was an understatement, and a testament to the coaching staff. The Minnie Mints and Mickey were becoming a thing in the gym. Coach Ashley had the vision to label this team as such, and it was a perfect label in more ways than one. The team prepared for the next competition coming up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The team was very confident as they were riding a high from WSF. Coach Ashley worked hard to make sure the group of kids stayed grounded and focused. With children as young as this team, it was a very tough thing to do. As the last practice before Chattanooga began, the team looked spectacular. They were wrapping up their last round of full outs and they hit three in a row. It was a great final practice to end on. The team was confident for our upcoming trip. Peppermint families loaded up and headed up north for the weekend. Chattanooga is a great city for our competition. It's a quaint city with tons of charm and very welcoming for families. There is a ton for kids to do in a very close proximity. They have buggy rides, children's museums, a beautiful aquarium, great restaurants, 
and haunted mystery tours. As we arrived in Chattanooga, one of my many responsibilities as a team dad is making sure all the peppermints arrive safely at our destination, and all team members are accounted for. Since Chattanooga was such a short drive for most of us, I was relieved as all of the teams and families arrived early and checked in quickly. We, as a family, check in to the historic Reed House in Chattanooga. The hotel is a staple in the city and has tons of history. We stayed in the hotel the previous year and really enjoyed the property. We booked it again this year, and as we arrived to check in, we were pleasantly surprised that the front desk upgraded our room to a larger suite. As we started to move our luggage into the room, I received the final text and confirmed everyone was safely in Chattanooga. Normally a city with a longer travel distance, families will run into traffic, flight delays, etc. It can be a late night waiting for people to arrive. Tonight was an exception, and a good friend and I decided to grab some dinner at the hotel restaurant as the entire team was accounted for. My wife and kids decided not to join us, as they wanted to get a good night's sleep. One of the most important things you can do at a competition with a tiny and a mini cheerleader is make sure your kids get to bed at a decent hour, as waking up on the wrong side of the bed can spell disaster. On the way down to the restaurant, one of the great braves came screaming and crying down the hall. She was in complete hysterics. She was running toward our room and alerted me that there were ghosts in the hotel and that we had one of the ghosts in our room. I called the little great Ray down and assured her there were no ghosts in our room and that she should go find her mom and start getting ready for bed. My daughters were getting settled in for bed and I did not want to scare them by sharing a ghost story right before bed. Part of the charm of Chattanooga is that they advertise haunted hotel tours. They do a great job with them, and the Reed House Hotel is part of the popular tours. I thought nothing more of the situation and headed down to meet Lewis at the hotel restaurant. We had a great time at dinner, and I returned upstairs a few hours to turn in for the night. When I arrived to the room, my wife Kelly was frustrated to say the least. She said multiple people had been banging on the door all night, and it was waking up the kids. I said, well, it's a cheer competition, and it's probably just kids trying to be funny, knocking on the door and running off. My wife replied, I think it has something to do with the haunted house scenario. My thoughts immediately went to the hysterical grape ray that was coming down the hall to warn us about our room. I did not think much more about it. After five minutes later, I heard a violent banging on the door. Bam, 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 bam. I shot up out of bed and headed toward the door. I could hear people talking and laughing outside the door. I opened the door, and the group ran down the hall, screaming as if they did not expect the door to open. One of the kids said, Mister, did you know you were in a haunted room? We were just coming to check it out. I closed the door and came back to bed. I jumped on my phone and googled Haunted House Hotels Chattanooga. On top of the search engine results was the Reed House. I went on, went on to read the famous haunting of room 311. You guessed it, we were upgraded to room 311 for the night. As I finished the article, there was another bang on the door. I ran as fast as I could to open the door so the noise did not wake up my sleeping daughters. I swung the door open, and to my surprise, the teenager staring me right in the face did not run off. He looked straight at me and asked if he could come into the room and look around. The look I gave the kid must have turned the light on in his head as he quickly scurried down the hallway toward the elevator. I closed the door, went into the bedroom, and got dressed. I was going down to speak with the manager to get us moved to another room as soon as possible. On the way down to the lobby, 
I was so frustrated about the situation that I jumped on the elevator going up. I was greeted by an overly nice couple who seemed to have been pretty inebriated. The wife began to chat with me and asked me, Do you think it is crazy if my husband is milling around a hotel that we are not even staying in to find the haunted room in this hotel? I did not immediately respond. She could tell I was a little frustrated by something. I waited about a minute and said, I don't think that would be a very good idea. The room you are looking for is the one I am currently staying in, and I have two young daughters who are trying to sleep, and every five minutes, someone starts banging on the door. The couple apologized and was so flustered they got off the elevator on the wrong floor. I may have made them a bit uncomfortable. As they got off, another lady jumped on at the top floor. She very politely asked, How is your evening going? I replied, I've had better. I explained our haunted room situation and told the lady that I was headed to the front desk to speak with someone. She looked down at the floor and calmly said, Well, I think the person you are coming to speak with is me. I am the night manager. She was so embarrassed by the entire thing. The hotel did a great job in remedying the situation as they placed security on the floor and placed a sign outside of our room. We did not have another disturbance for the rest of the evening and were moved to another room the following night. The next morning, my wife and I were exhausted. Luckily, the girls slept right through everything. The good news was that Peppermint looked like they were ready to go. The entire team was in a great mood and they were eager to take the floor for day one. Peppermint was riding away from the last couple of competitions and wanted to set the tone. Going into warm-ups, the vibe was good and they headed off. As the mints came out on stage to perform, I noticed the energy level was not what it usually is. They seemed a little off. As the routine progressed, there were a few bobbles and the routine was not as clean as it normally would be. The team finished the routine strong and it went great, but it was just not as clean and confident as usual. As we learned later that day, Peppermint was in first place after day one, but they had a ton of room for improvement. The second place team was right behind them, right on their heels. Peppermint needed to come out with confidence and energy that, that they normally bring to win this competition. Day two was among us, and they seemed very, very loose. So far, this was their first real test of the season. I was interested to see how they would respond, knowing they were not the clear favorite going into day two. For six, seven, and eight-year-old kids, this team performed incredibly well under pressure. Mint was getting ready to leave for warm-ups, and they were having a great time together as they normally do. Last-minute prep and makeup application before we heard the words, All right, warm-ups off. The group left for warm-ups, and the parent group cheered loudly to pump them up. When they hit the stage, I knew immediately. The music started, and they came out with attitude and spunk. They hit the stun of death with vigor, and the facials and the stomps were out in full force. Peppermint was on fire. They were not going to be denied on this day. They finished the routine and flew off stage with confidence. They knew they finished well. Now it was just up to the other teams. Hopefully, Peppermint did not get outshined on this day. As we waited for awards, I was nervous as usual. With two daughters, I want both of their teams to do well. More importantly, I hope they both finish in the same place. It does not have to be first place, just the same place. It just makes life easier. While my daughters are best friends and play and love each other fiercely, they do like to press each other's buttons when one wins and the other does not. The sibling rivalry is real and it can get ugly. As we waited the fate of the peppermint rays, we found out that the grape rays won first place. I breathed a sigh of relief as we now begin to wait for the announcements of the mini-level division. 
as the teams were announced, we moved into the top three teams. As the second place team was announced, we then knew the Minnie Mints and Mickey were still undefeated and they did it again. We won the athletic championships for the third year in a row. The two-day performance was not their best of the season, but they finished great. The focus now shifted as the team wondered if they would become grand champion for the third competition in the row. As the day progressed, it was evident it would not be in the cards. The grand champion for level one was announced, and it was not Peppermint. As practice resumed, the team was disappointed they did not win grand champion. In my opinion, it was just what the team needed to regroup and refocus. They were on the verge of doing something special as a mini team. Twitter began to buzz about how good this group was. And I was seeing tweets from people all over who heard about the team and how good the routine was. It was fun to see the chatter about a mini team. Of course, the team was completely oblivious to all of this, as none of them had social media accounts. Coach Ashley got the team back to work and also took the time to explain why they did not win grand champion for the previous competition. She explained how hard it was to win a grand champion, and if they wanted to do it again, they would need to keep practicing, do their best, and hope the judges saw all the hard work they were putting in at practice. That week of practice was the most dialed in I have ever seen the team to date. Every full out was a hit. The energy was contagious, and the bond between Peach and Mint continued to grow as they went full out for each other and pushed each other to take it to the next level. The next competition was the Cheer Sport Regionals in Atlanta, Georgia. Stingrays affectionately refer to the competition as Little Cheer Sport which is a one-day competition that gets the entire gym tuned up for the next huge competition, which is the Cheer Sport Nationals, which is arguably the biggest competition in the world. Peppermint was completely dialed in for this competition. From the beginning of day one, you could tell they wanted to make up for the less-than-perfect performance from the athletic championships. You could tell Peppermint had a bit of a chip on their shoulder not being selected as grand champion from the previous con competition. The coaching staff had them completely focused and ready. As the team headed back for warm-ups, I noticed a few familiar faces that started to gather to watch Peppermint. With cheer sport being held in Atlanta, there were, were many Stingray alumni and athletes from other gyms who wanted to catch a glimpse of the mini team people were talking about. We also noticed the support from the rest of the gym was providing, as many familiar faces from other Stingray teams were coming to watch the Mini Mints and Mickey. It was so flattering to see an incredible level 5 athlete come to watch our little mini team. As the team hit the stage, they had a fierce look about them. Coach Ashley was expecting a great performance from them, and they wanted to deliver. They came out of the gates flawless with a ton of energy. As the team went into their stunt transition, you could tell everything was immaculate and effortless. The team then picked up momentum into the pyramid and nailed it. The jumps and the dance were flawless. After the routine, the parents were buzzing. I personally was shocked at how good their performance was. It was breathtaking, and I was astounded by the execution and cleanliness. I have seen some clean routines in my three years watching Stingray teams, but this routine was special. The team knew they did well and was buzzing with excitement. The parents greeted the group with huge hugs as Coach Ashley gave, gave some final words of encouragement and was proud that they did their best and gave a great effort. As the awards announcements were being made, we found out that Minnie Mints and Mickey did it again. They won first place. The team was ecstatic. As team dad, I was instructed to get the team organized for pictures and release the children to their parents. While we were patiently waiting for our pictures, one of the staff officials handed the scoring packet to the Peppermint coaching staff. Coach Kelsey and Coach, Je coach Jessica opened the score sheet and both of their jaws literally hit the floor. 
They both covered their mouths looking at the score sheet. I asked, how did they do? They looked over at me and said, well, I can't tell you the score, but let me tell you, it is one of the best scores I have seen in a very long time. Needless to say, the Peppermints went on to win their third grand champion for the year. That concludes Chapter 7. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we will get into Chapter 8, Preparing for the Big Three. And as you just heard, uh, Peppermint has hit their, has earned their third Grand Champion uh, Award for the year. And they are really starting to come into their own as a team. And this was a really fun part of the season. Um, some of the kids that were on Peppermint, this was their first year cheering. And um, as a mini team, uh, there is no summit, there is no worlds, uh, because you're not of age. So the biggest part of the season um, that the kids learn about uh, from the older kids and other kids in the gym on other teams is the big three. And uh, the big three being cheer sport, NCA, and UCA. Uh, those are the three main uh, national uh, competitions that Stingrays um, goes to as a group. And it's a big deal for our mini teams and our tiny teams, well, all of our teams. And, uh, um, you know, they, the whispers started to, uh, to get into their heads about this triple crown thing. And uh, the next part of the story, uh, Chapter 8, gets into that a little bit on uh, since, you know, Peppermint can't go to Summit uh, because they're a mini team, you know, they, they figure out this goal of hit winning the Triple Crown. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit on Chapter 8. So hope you're enjoying. Um, you know, please, if, if you uh, are enjoying the, the, the podcast, please give us a review on iTunes. It really certainly helps out. Uh, also, share with your friends. I'd love uh, for as many people to uh, learn about this, this fun experience and, um, and, and just share with others. So I would, I would appreciate that and look forward to uh, talking with you soon. Take care, guys. Welcome to Midland. The greatest place on earth has bleeding green turf. It's always a magical day when you're Midland.